What's up, everybody? Keith Hayes, Practically Tori here. Just wanted to uh, talk to you guys about how good and faithful the Most High is. So, uh, I've worn contacts every day since I was in the sixth or seventh grade, young, young. So I'd say that's probably, what, 13, 14 years old. And uh, I'd say the worst, my prescription is, wasn't ever terrible by any means, but it was bad enough, you know, that I needed glasses and contacts to be able to see and perpetuate life on a clear basis. <laughs> But uh, when my wife and I, we, we first uh, got together, my prescription was like negative 125. And uh, it kind of stabled off, you know, kind of planed out. And for a few years there, I think the worst it was that it, it, it had gotten was negative 150. And then uh, for a few years, it, it, it kind of stable. Sta what I'm trying to say is my vision stabilized uh, for a few years. And then it dropped off and got better to where my prescription was a negative 125. And then it went to negative 170 or uh, negative... 0.75. So, since all this COVID nonsense started, March 23rd, I haven't worn contacts since that day. Since March 23rd. So, fast forward to today, I just got out of the, my uh, eye doctor's appointment yes, you have to wear a mask in a freaking eye doctor's office, which is ridiculous. But, whenever you get into the actual room, you know, I was like, dude, do I really have to wear this? He's like, no. It's like, good, because I'm taking it off. He was like, okay. <laughs> so that kind of made my day. Made me happy. I just or it so I could get the freaking crap done with, you know, just be in and out and be done with it so I don't have to go back there for another year. Well, um, I did my vision test and he checked my eyes and blah, blah, blah. And my eyesight got even better. So for years I've been talking about getting LASIK and and, and wanting my eye, my vision fixed and just hoping and praying and thinking maybe the Most High will heal my eyes. And my eye, my vision got better, man. Like, so the doctor said that my vision was, uh, Oh, how do you put it? My prescription is negative 0 0.50 now. But I'm hitting 2020. So, said that to say that if my eyes progress anymore and get any better, things are obviously going to get clearer. But I'm just going to be seeing 2020 even more clear than what I already am because I'm seeing 2020. I haven't seen 2020 since I was 14, you know, younger, younger than 14 years old when I started wearing glasses. So, yeah, just a small tidbit of a uh, testimony. The Father's faithful. And you know, that goes to say that there's blessing and cursing that comes upon men and women, just mankind, when we choose to either obey or disobey the commands of the Most High. Sorry, kind of had to romp on it there for a 
a second. But I don't think it's any accident that since I began to keep Torah around about 2015, my eyesight dropped from negative 125 to negative 75 and then stabilized for years until this year, 2020, at which point my eyesight went from being stabilized over the past five years to actually getting better. That's about the length of time that Tor has been on my radar. And it's a... It's a big deal to me. fighting emotion. It's a big deal that the Father would see fit to cause my eyesight to get better. I mean, even when I started driving, I, I've had a restriction on my driver's license that required me to wear some form of corrective lenses while driving. The doctor was like, dude, you could go up there and pass the test right now and have that restriction taken off of your license. Isn't that awesome? Most High is faithful. And He is truly righteous and, and, and full of justice. But He is merciful and kind. And is completely willing to give you the desire of your heart. even in the form of healing your body or your eyesight or whatever ails you. If you would just obey. He wants to bless you. And he wants to keep you. <laughs> you know, the whole ironic blessing, he wants to make his face shine upon you and give you peace. <laughs> but that blessing is for those who choose to keep and obey the commands of the Most High and believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. Guys, he's so faithful. <laughs> I don't really have anything to talk about. Just that little testimony. But it's a big one. It's a big one to me. so thankful right now. And I 
believe that my eyesight will continue to get better and even more clear. Sorry for all the pausing and the... <sighs> the being choked up. Hey. Man, and just the ability that I can see with complete clarity these deer feeding on the side of the highway. <sighs> the fact that I can go hunting and draw my bow back without corrective lenses and being able just that thought excites me man and I thought and had a suspicion that man my eyesight's getting better throughout all of this BS that's going on this year and the father's been so faithful to just provide every need that my wife and I have had and changed the desires of our hearts and prompt us into obedience to sell our home and prepare us for whatever he has for us next which we're in the process of doing That he thought, man, I'm going to do you one better. He's just so faithful, guys. I'm just incredibly eaten up with emotion right now. <laughs> Just a bunch of a bunch of feels. <laughs> all the feels. All the feelings. And I'm so incredibly thankful for his mercy and his kindness. And you know, for, for those of you who could be out there thinking, you know, why would he do it for me or or why not you? I don't know. But he's faithful and he's merciful. And what I do know is I have had a desire, not that I've done it perfectly, not that I have walked every step just perfectly exactly with the way the Most High wants me to. But my desire is to be a man like David. That in everything I do, it would bring honor to him. That through my obedience, it would bring him joy. And it would bring him glory and honor. And that through my obedience, he would know that I truly love him. Like Yeshua said in John 14. If you love me, obey my commands. And through your obedience, because of your obedience, Yeshua will come into you. And if Yeshua is there, then the Most High is welcome in that presence as well. So if, if Yeshua is in you, the Most High is in you. And that 
just excites me to make me think or believe <laughs> that he would do something like that, such as heal me, heal my eyesight. Like Yeshua did so many times walking this earth. Man, he is so faithful. So who am I? I'm nobody. I'm just a person who's trying to do the best I can with what I've got where I'm at. And in every turn, and no, I don't read scripture every day. I try to talk to him every day. I try to walk in thanksgiving, be thankful. I try to be humble and kind. But I don't do everything perfect. I just want to please the most high. So I guess if you've got something ailing you, if you if there's something going on with you, And you're wondering, why not me? I'll be honest with you, I don't know. We see example in scripture that Israel he was burdened with a pain in his hip. I guess the father dislocated it or whatever. <laughs> But he walked with a limb. Paul had ailments that the Father saw fit not to take from him. I suppose to keep him humble, I don't know. But I tell you that there is blessing in keeping the commands of the Most High. Keeping Torah. Keeping His Sabbath holy. Keeping Shabbat. Keeping the Moedim. All the appointed times. There's blessing in that. He's faithful. He's just so abundantly faithful and gracious and merciful. Oh, that's all I've got, guys. That's all I've got. There's, no, <laughs> there's nothing else. He's just so good. The Father's good. Believe it or not. He's good. He still exists. He's here. Tangibly moving. He's calling his people out of the system. There is slowly being more and more a defined line that is being drawn in the sand. going to come a day where you are going to have to make a stand and say no as for me and my house we will serve Yahuwah the most high God the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob the God that saw fit to graft in those who are not native to Israel into the tree of Israel. 
that we could be a part of that olive tree, that very God. And let me define for, define for you guys the word Gentile. If you are a believer in the Most High and you believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, and let's face it, salvation is belief that Yeshua is the Messiah, that belief perpetuates obedience. It's not one or the other or belief without obedience. Belief that perpetuates obedience is salvation. It's not works. It's belief that perpetuates obedience. Again, not works. Salvation equals belief that Yeshua is the Messiah that perpetuates obedience out of love for the Most High. That is salvation. And if you believe that, Not greasy, sloppy faith, you know, grace train, whatever, whatever you want to call it. None of that. But if you believe that Yeshua is the Messiah and you guard to do his commands the way it is spoken in Revelation 12, 17, 14, 12, uh, chapter 15, I don't recall the verse, and uh, 22, 14 you believe that, then you are not a Gentile. You were grafted into Israel. The word Gentile literally means nation out of covenant with the Most High. Are you in covenant with the Most High or are you not? See, because if you are in covenant with the Most High, you are not Gentile. something to that. You may have been Gentile. See, that's the line of Ephraim. Even the line of Manasseh. You read in Genesis 48, whenever Abraham, he crossed his hands like that to give the greater blessing that was supposed to go to the eldest son from Manasseh, the right hand, this is my right hand, <laughs> um, the front camera flips the image, but the blessing of the right hand went to the youngest son, which was Ephraim, and Joseph asked his father, he said, what's the deal? What's going on? Why are you doing this? The prominent blessing is supposed to go to Manasseh, my eldest son. Which the blessing that was supposed to go to Joseph went to his two sons. Which is why that blessing from uh, uh, Jacob... was going to Ephraim and Manasseh. When that blessing, what you have to realize about that blessing, and more importantly about Ephraim and Manasseh, is that, yes, they were half Israel, or they were of Israel, but they were half Israeli, half Egyptian. Half nation in covenant, half nation out of covenant. So at one point you lived your life out of covenant with the Father, but once you begin to take on the belief that Yeshua is the Messiah and guard to do His commands, when you get that, then you were once 
nation out of covenant, you are now in covenant and grafted into the tree of life. That is the tree of Israel. Dude, man, this it just goes so deep and so deep. And the Father is so faithful and so gracious and merciful and kind. And I'm incredibly grateful. Hello, Popo. So, yeah. Man, I just wanted to say all that. Bless you guys. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you peace all the days of your life. All the days that you choose to worship the Most High and guard to do his commands you don't know what those commands are, if you don't know what the Moedim are, by all means, hit me up, ask questions, let's get a narrative going, let's, let's get dialogue between us, I'm here, I am perfectly willing to study with any one of you, answer any questions you've got, and if I don't know it, let's dive in together and find out, you know? Shalom, you guys. Love you.